So today I'm going to be talking about FET, which is frequency doubling technology. And so FDT in neuroophthalmology is mostly about knowing what it is, even though we don't usually use it in neuroophthalmology. And so your typical FDT printout is similar to what a Humphrey visual field printout looks like on the grayscale, but instead of having threshold perimetry, as in standard automated perimetry in the Humphrey visual field, where you're using a stair-stepping strategy to increase and decrease the decibel stimulus of light to determine threshold and probability of abnormality compared to normal controls. In FDT, we're, we're relying upon a different technology, and that is frequency doubling. So when you have a vertical sign grading like these three bars, if we change the frequency, moving from low spatial frequency to high, we can create an illusion called the frequency doubling illusion, where the three bars will suddenly appear to be six bars. And that's similar to what happens when you're watching a movie. A series of still frames can be sped up by increasing the frequency that will give the appearance that it's, that it's moving, even though it's really stationary. And it's an illusion, a frequency doubling illusion, because it's a real stimulus, but you're misinterpreting that stimulus as six bars, a doubling of the three bars, even though it's really only three. And so in a patient who has FDT, you're taking advantage of FDI. By changing the frequency, we can induce a doubling illusion. And so if we're testing this square here, analogous to testing a spot on Humphrey visual field, the patient will see six of these grates, even though it's really just a combination of two different sets of three that are counterfacing. And that flicker is what's creating the illusion of six. So even though there's only three, they see six. And that is frequency doubling technology. It takes advantage of the intrinsic characteristics of the different cells that are interpreting the information. It used to be thought that it was just the type of cell, the MY cell in the magnocellular layer. However, we know there's probably some processing in the cortex as well. It doesn't matter because the technology is the same. We're using a frequency doubling illusion in frequency doubling technology called FDT to test visual field. It's not the same as, and probably not as good as Humphrey visual field and probably can't be used for neuroophthalmology things like we're using it for. But it's reasonable to have this as an automated perimetry as a screen if you have nothing else. So if it's completely normal, that's, that's usually a good sign that the field really is normal. If it's abnormal, there are all sorts of things that can cause artifacts in frequency doubling technology. And so we're gonna recommend a confirmatory Humphrey visual field. And in general, the papers, not for glaucoma, but for neurops suggest that we really can't use FTT reliably for neuroophthalmology diseases. And I would refer to you to the American Academy of Ophthalmology consensus statement published in ophthalmology about visual fields and the studies of FDT and glaucoma versus standard automated perimetry. You need to know about it because it creates problems in neurop because a lot of general ophthalmologists and optometrists have FDT because it's portable, it's fast, and it's relatively inexpensive. And so it produces a lot of referrals for patients who have visual field defects that may or may not be neurophthalmic. And in those patients, we're always going to go back to standard automated parametry to confirm the finding and also to make sure it's not artifact. So even though I personally don't use FDT, every ophthalmologist needs to know a little bit about FDT.